Welcome to the uh, Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting uh, for um, December 16th, uh, 2020. It is 5 p.m., 501. Uh, meetings normally held in the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT. Remote meeting connection uh, noted below. So uh, you have a dial in number of 312 626 6799, or um, there's a toll free number, which is 833 548. 0276. Um, the meeting ID is 620-007-8930. And the passcode, if needed, is 627-371. Um, there's also a link. Um, you can all find this on our town of um, town of Deerfield homepage, our website. Uh, there's a if you go to the right, there's a, a link to our meeting tonight. And on there, there's a packet and an agenda, and you can click on the Zoom link. Um, that would be where you are today here on the Zoom link. So um, uh, for meeting attendees uh, should mute their phones and you can do this by doing star six for landlines unless asking a question or commenting, all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. One of my faults, <laughs> I always tend to talk over people, but um, yes, if you can wait, that'd be great. And, and then state your name and who you are and what your question is, so. Uh, so we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we were going to have an executive session this evening, but uh, we are not. That is postponed at this time. So we thought we'd work on a couple other things. We do have a sewer hearing, um, sewer rate hearing coming up um, at 6 p.m. So we have to wait until 6 p.m. for that. Um, but we are going to have a, uh, a visit and a discussion with Chris Curtis, who, um, who does a lot of our uh, municipal vulnerability preparedness grant. So we'll have some updates and uh, some info on the new rounds and a uh, contract signed with him. So uh, I guess, and then we have, you know, later on in the, in the, in the meeting, we have annual permits and license uh, licenses and um, look at, you know, postponing town annual town meeting, maybe till June and some other things to do. So why don't we start with uh, Chris Curtis and you're on tonight. So welcome. How are you? Oh, you're and you're muted still. So there I'm you sorry go. About that. <laughs> no problem. Welcome. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. <laughs> so, um, would you like me to start with the uh, MVP grant um, discussion? Sure. Okay, and then I'd like to also do. Um, some updates on the ongoing projects that we have um, happening in town. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. So we had uh, this past uh, week, we had a meeting of our MVP core group and we talked about all of these things. Carolyn was there. Um, we have a, another round of MVP grants coming up next year, uh, probably with a target date of um, March ballpark. Um, they don't, they don't have any announcement yet about the grants, but we're trying to get ready for them and we're trying to think about projects that we might be wanting to apply for. And our discussion at the uh, core group included um, talking about a, a variety of these things. I think we, uh, we recommended uh, to the select board that uh, the next application would include a, um, a couple of different things. One is, uh, Hopefully we could include the construction of the Leary lot um, as a green parking lot. And we're going to work with Ty and Bond uh, to try to come up with an estimate of the costs for that. Um, the, the town's share of that project would probably be higher than what we had um, in the application the last time, which was not funded. Um, I think in part because we, we needed to have a bigger match um, in order to make that competitive. Um, the, big, the other bigger project that um, we think might be able to be included is, is some component um, of the wastewater treatment plant um, flood resilience work. Um, okay. It probably isn't going to be possible to get the amount that um, 
the engineers were originally thinking. Yep. Um, ballpark, we're thinking that the application would probably need to be in the two to two hundred fifty thousand dollar, maybe maximum of three hundred thousand dollar range. Um, and I, I mentioned to the MVP core group that part of the reason we didn't get funded the last time was um, we applied for one point eight million dollars, and they only had ten million dollars for the whole state, right. and the the average grant was about two hundred thousand dollars per community last time. So we we were thinking big, but we may have kind of been thinking bigger than than what was really possible. Sure. Uh, so we're thinking, you know, those those projects plus some of the smaller items that tend to uh, help us get funded and provide more of a diverse uh, project, and those would include um, the Healthy Soils Initiative uh, demonstration project that we applied for last time. Um, we're thinking Frontier High School Climate Science class programming. Uh, we're thinking about doing another community forum and. Uh, expanding the, um, the component of climate resiliency on the town's website for public outreach and education, and uh, also working on imp implementing the town's new green infrastructure policy that you've adopted. So those would be smaller ticket items, um, but I, again, it, it, I think it helps us a lot to have those in the application because they make us more competitive and interesting than just doing that. The uh, yeah infrastructure projects alone. Was there I think any... what we're trying to do really is to um, regain our momentum mm -hmm. that we had in February, because we were really doing well. Yep. And we want to focus on um, community outreach, like, you know, we were promoting dragonflies and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, planting native um, vegetation that would suck up water and um, you know, support dragonflies that eat mosquitoes and, yep. um, you know, that kind of thing. We, we're trying to work with conjunction with the mosquito district um, that I'm, you know, commissioner on. And we're, we're trying to do a lot of um, creative, uh, sustainable practices. And that's part of, you know, yeah. I mean, it's another partner and it's another way to get some money and it doesn't, and it's not really town it's participation and gets people excited but it's not really town money but yeah. it would have a huge impact collectively it would have a huge impact and that's what we're trying to do i think was there any discussion about you know kind of working on ideas at our town park at all um that you know we have to work on and see how we can tie in some of that or that might be a later round or something well i sit on the national um, well, I sit on the National uh, Association of Conservation Districts Education Committee, yep. and they have um, pollinator, um, a, you know, online pollinator class, and they yeah. also have, um, they will be coming out in the spring with an online healthy soils class, which is, is similar to what the state's goals are for healthy soils. And we're hoping to work, and that was what Chris was talking about, we're hoping to work through the schools and, yeah. you know, have... Some of that property be part of you know an educational project for the kids That'd so if we're still remote, if we're still remote in the spring we can do some of that i mean that's mm -hmm. part of getting the did only she go mute yeah carolyn we can't oh. hear her. her internet's in and out oh okay no wonder uh yeah so Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, I, I thought of, you know, I, I thought of working with the schools and, and, you know, tying into that project somehow and working with our, um, you know, working, oh, oh, I know we have to deal with some, some, you know, resiliency on that property and how that all ties in. So that, that's great. Um, and then let's see, was there another thing I was thinking of? So is that, okay, that's good. Yeah. Well, great. one thing I'd like to kind of look at is we got to find a way, and the MVP grants may be part of it to clean up Libby. Bingo. Yeah, just even the culvert between the town hall and the school. If you go down there, there's probably six trees blocking that culvert right now. Just yeah. you're, you're not going to get anything out of the MVP program for that, but that was why I spent so much time on the Mosquito yeah. District and forming the Mosquito District because you can 
for public health reason do yeah. clean of the brook. Yeah, all the kids are right there. I mean, it's just such a wetland area for mosquitoes. And if we could get in there and get some of that and get that water flowing out of town. I mean, I know it stops up other places too, but at least clear out what we can. We had gotten an original proposal from um, Ty and Bon. Uh, Zach had been working with Kevin for a um, uh, one-time conservation commission, like, like you know, a permit I, for the I, whole I don't want to say dredging thing, right. but it, it's what other communities with mosquito districts use, and mm -hmm. what it is is the maintenance of yes. Bloody Brook, maintenance of up in Old Deerfield. Um, by, um, um, you know, behind Richardson's Candy Kitchen and all that. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. really, we need to take advantage of that. And it, mm -hmm. and it just, I mean, that was the whole purpose of all this effort. Yes. To be yep. able to That'd be great. Okay. So thank okay. you, thank David, you, for bringing it up. I, I don't think people keep thinking that I mean, it is for the future because there's no question there's more bugs because of climate change, but we just need to deal with our current problem, which is, you know, we haven't done maintenance since the 80s and yep. we've got to take care of it because it's yep. really having an impact on the whole village of South Deerfield. Yep. Great. Well, thank you, Chris. So that's a good, a good list there. Great. Um, so I'd like to, you know, begin working on that. Uh, application fairly soon and I'll what I'll do is put together a, you know kind of a written outline of what we've talked about and and run it by you all by email just so you can you can comment on things as we go yep so we've got a couple of months to prepare things but I, I like to get started early because it always takes a long time to put these things together sure and then we have a contract to do for you right right so that you can get going on that I'm gonna find that at the moment. Um, Trevor, that's a signature between Chris and I with Brenda. Oh, perfect. As long as, as long as you guys don't have a problem with that. No, no, I read, I read it, and um, let's see, there's one. In here. Want a motion on that, Casey? Sure. Yeah. Okay, I'd make a motion that we um, support the contract to move forward with the MVP program with Chris Curtis and the town. There it is. Yep. And that was um, that was spanning, you know now until the end of the fiscal year, I believe, right? And then um, it was not to exceed $3,500 and it was an hourly kind of thing. So yeah, I, I would second that motion, Carolyn. Thank you. Do you, um, okay. <laughs> Do you want to call it, Carolyn? I, oh, all right. I didn't know who was going to chair. She's looking so. for it. She, she has chair, the dogs. You chair. <laughs> no, all right. I'm sure I'm hear. sorry. My internet is so so awful. Um, no problem. Okay. So um, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfer. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Um, the only other thing I just want to add is that Chris and Dave Prickett had worked up a proposal um, for the MVP program um, for our wastewater treatment. Um, it's separate. And um, we're going to work on that as well. And when we see that it's favorable to put that in, I mean, that will fit with our timeline with um, the sewer, we're going to put that in. Yep. And that was, um, that was several different options. Chris, did you just want to address that real quick? Well, um, again, I, I think uh, we'd like to try to roll some component of that into the application that I was just talking about. Um, we're going to, Casey and I are going to try to get together um, with the engineers and, and talk about that um, when there is a free moment here and uh, everybody's su super busy at this point. So <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we don't have to do it, you know, immediately, but we'll try to, we'll try to get together with the engineers and see if there's a way to, to roll that into the, to the one application. The other alternative is that the town could hypothetically file two MVP applications that are distinct and different. Mm -hmm. um, and one could be just for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, I, I, I think that's not the, 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 the option that I would prefer, I guess. Um, I'd, I'd rather see us do just one application and, and make those decisions about priorities um, internally rather than letting the state decide for us. So my only concern, though, is every time we've done 
an MVP thing. It's like it has to be completed by a specific timeline. And, and this project is not going to be starting until, I mean, the bids will go out in 2021, I guess, but. Um, oh, no, that's Trevor. That's why um, we're, I want Chris to work on it. And then when we're ready for when it can uh, fill in. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure we're not. We're, we're not doing it this spring because it, no, because there's not enough time. I mean, yeah. the contract time is too right now. I mean, we don't know how often the governor is going to do it, but yeah. we've been doing it two or three times a year. Right. Yeah. Now. That's true. Yeah. So catch a later round or something. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're going to time it when we're ready for it. Right. Right. That sounds good. Okay. But I, I just want to make sure that it was clear that we are have that on the back burner too, because that will definitely decrease the cost to the town. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're investing so much money in the sewer plant. That's our match. Yeah. And then so to have this, you know, cost covered by the state is huge because yeah. it's less that the taxpayers have to pay or the ratepayers have to pay. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Great. Um, okay. And then, um, and then do you want to get, was that, I think that was it. You were going to give maybe an update yes. date on what we're doing right now and how those are going, or is there anything else you want to add? To this? Yeah, that's what I'd like to do next is, is talk about the um, current ongoing projects. And I'm, I'm glad Casey's here to, to Sorry, help. it took me a bit. <laughs> uh, glad you no. made it home safe, Casey. Yeah. My internet's a little unstable too, so bear with me. We'll just do the best we can. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I guess there's two main projects that uh, I, I think we should focus on. One is the Kelleher Drive um, culvert replacement and then the uh, tree box filters project. So shall we talk about Kelleher Drive first, Casey? Um, yeah, we can do Kelleher Drive. Um, so right now we've had, as you know, on Friday we had a, the contractor hit an elect an unmarked or unknown um, electrical service as they were excavating. Actually, I just want to correct you for the record. It was mismarked. We went right. through dig safe and it right. was eight feet away from the dig safe marker. So yeah, that happened. Um, and Zach and Kevin, Kevin was on the ground. <clears throat> And Zach, we're working, they're both working with Eversource. We had a meeting this morning with Eversource to get some idea. They have to develop an engineering plan and a schedule. And so they're going to get that information to Zach and Zach's going to review it. Zach Cherniak's our, our uh, engineer on this project, the project manager. So, but the time frame to do the work um, because of the holidays is a little adjusted. So from what Kevin said to me, Eversource will have somebody out there excavating on Friday, but they aren't positive they will be back completed. Um, definitely not before Christmas, but hopefully the next week. With the contractor, once that repair or relocation of line is complete, the contractor will begin the rest, the next whatever phase of work we're in um, to finish the culvert. And so at the meeting, I suggested to everybody that we send some information out to the residents so that they knew, because there's been a lot of confusion and a lot of concern on the part of the residents. And yeah. Kevin and Kevin and Zach and I have followed up several times, Zach on his own, but also the three of us have followed up with the contractor to just make sure that they're maintaining the public safety of that area because it's a key crossing area and there's a lot of water that moves through there. So we sent out a flyer to the residents and I got some help from Jen, Sergeant Bartak and Chief Paturik on that to get it out today. It's going up on the website tomorrow, but basically says, look, this is the situation. You know, we hit a, we hit a lot, an unknown or unmarked line. We, have notified Eversource. Eversource is working with us and our engineers. We have a time frame, so hopefully done by the 30th, and then the culvert project will start back up once that's done. There are some mitigating circumstances we will have to work with um, the engineer and the contractor on, but right now we need to get through the Eversource electrical issue. 
I, I think they need to be pushed more. We went through the dig safe process and um, we, you know, it wasn't our fault. The contractor is behind. This pushes them more behind. Yes, we're aware of that. Um, so Eversource needs to jump on this a little bit more. I mean, this well, is um, what I'd like to do is check in with Zach tomorrow about what he gets for a schedule from David Velez at Eversource. And then we'll be able to, to con discuss okay. that a little we bit need, more. We need to push a little bit more, Casey. This is not, this is their fault. They're responsible. And if they don't, aren't making a real effort to hurry along, then we have the ability to come to have a, our own solution and move forward. So and I, what I think we need to do is let Zach review that that engineering plan so that he can give us the best advice. And then yeah. is it fast? It may be, he's pushing with Eversource on his own. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to give him a little bit of latitude to do that because he knows them better than I do. Like mm -hmm. the higher up guy that we've been talking with is somebody that Zach knows well. So I'd like to give him at least the latitude to have that conversation before we start pushing more emphatically. And uh, council is aware of this in case it becomes an issue. I, I was just going to say, just, my understanding anyone, was, oh, sorry. My understanding I, was that we were supposed to just be done next week with Eversource, not the 30th. That's two it, weeks. It, it's because of the holidays, Carolyn. And we don't know whether we would be able to work out a different um, work schedule for that for Eversource, but the question is out there. So I, I want to talk to Zach in the morning because he hasn't, he would have notified me. I don't have an email from him. He would have notified me if he had um, received anything from Eversource as an update from our, more, our meeting this morning. So uh, I'll have a little more information tomorrow, I think. Casey, if, if I could jump in here. I, I did talk mm -hmm. to Zach um, around noon today. Um, Good. <laughs> and he said that um, he had talked with Eversource. I guess he has a contact there that he works with pretty regularly. And that Eversource had agreed to pay for the, the full cost of, of this work, which I thought was really helpful. Um, yeah. He, said he expected a two week delay before Emmy Smith could get back to, to work. Um, yeah. And, Partly because of the snowstorm and part, but they would, they did say they were going to get out there on Friday um, to begin right. the work. And that's yeah. good news. Um, yeah. If they're willing to get out there and do some of that excavating, part of the engineering piece is relocating, how they're going to relocate the line. Um, and that was what Zach explained to me. So I'm curious to see what Zach come, what Zach knows tomorrow when I check in with him. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. I know he was gonna. I knew he was gonna talk to you, but I didn't get a chance to circle back around to it with him. The other um, pieces that I, I would mention are that um, because uh, the you know the asphalt plants are shutting down at this point, that yes, we will not be able to get the paving done until spring. Um, Zach said even if even if there was asphalt available, he would not recommend paving on frozen right. ground. That that's generally not right. a good idea. So we'd be looking at probably the end of March or early April to get that paving done. And then um, in terms of costs, uh, he said that, um, you know, there, there have been some extra costs to date, the police detail. Um, yes. An extra cost that's going to be in, in the neighborhood of $10,000. And there's some miscellaneous like cost for wetlands replication and stone that were somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty eight hundred dollars um we do have a contingency built into the grant and, right uh, so we have the money to to pay for those and i'm hoping that we don't have a lot of additional um costs beyond that but zach indicated that the, the contractors might make a delay claim based on the eversource problem yep we'll see he indicated that, that to me as well but i wasn't he was a little reticent to put that on paper because he hadn't, he was reviewing their, the information to see. And without, without firm information from Eversource in terms of a time frame, that's what he's looking for as a schedule from them. Um, he wanted to see that before he addresses the request for delay, which would, 
add some cost and time. And so it's it's kind of a sticky wicket right now because we didn't intend for this line to be there and it slowed down a project that was already slowed down because of water. So, so I'm hoping um, that dewatering was their responsibility. And we've, con Zach has made it clear on several occasions, yes. We, I mean, we need to be aggressive about this, seriously. Without getting contentious. And that's, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's okay. the piece that we're balancing right now. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're not too nice. That's all. I am leading the charge with Zach, but to some extent, Zach is, it's easier for Zach to get that across as an engineer and, and choose how he's going to approach them in a meeting because he can state exactly what the situation that needs to change is. And, and but we have talked about how forceful to come across in meetings with Kevin. Okay. I don't know whose phone is on, but it's not me. All right. Um, it's okay. I don't so even know where my phone is. <laughs> the other project um, is the tree boxes. Right. And, you know, kind of similarly, we had underground utility problems that weren't marked there as well as you know. Um, nope. We had to end up demobilizing and pushing that project off into the spring as well. We do really want, I think, and need to finish that project in the spring so that we can continue to demonstrate you know, good performance for our grants and hopefully be continue to be competitive for more grants. Um, so there's some things that have to be dealt with there. Um, and they include, um, I guess we, Casey, we need survey, additional survey work. To yes, I've reached out for an answer from the surveyor about that. I've also sent the engineer a uh, another email requesting more information, have not heard back. So at this point, I think we need to schedule a meeting with council, which I had a brief discussion um, this morning with Lisa about that, because we're going to work with one of with Lisa and one of her associates on he's got the paperwork, he's ready to go. It's just we need to set the meeting up um, to deal with the engineer. So that piece of it needs it, the other i'm sorry the other piece of it is dealing with the the public response to the tree boxes and that's something that i was hoping you might have i think we need to schedule some some meetings to get mm -hmm. some information from them on the other hand i do think we need to have some sort of a idea of what we could do chris so that there's a framework to invite that conversation yeah, and with the it, businesses. It's a little bit of a chicken and egg problem because we really need to have the engineer's situation resolved. In exactly. Meeting. We exactly. Need, we need to have the engineers present at the public meeting to be able to respond to the possibility of, for example, moving tree box locations um, to alter, alternate sites. So, you know, we had talked about trying to do the public meeting. Um, on the 30th, but I, I don't know if we'll really be ready to do it. <laughs> I don't think we will because of the holidays. And it, it's, I don't necessarily think we can't get some response, a response from the surveyor to help us because we did get some information to him. He was looking for some information from the engineer. Um, he got some information. It may not be enough though. And so at this point with the engineer not responding to me, this is the place that I think we need to have a conversation with council and approach a more emphatic manner of communication. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. So he hasn't replied back to your your letter you sent a couple of weeks back? No. All right, so yeah, definitely a meeting with, the, with our attorney yep. and, and, and yeah, time to, time to put the pressure on. Do you want me to send an email out, Chris, mm -hmm. so we can schedule that? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty flexible, so schedule it based on what you guys can do. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to have waste time on a public meeting when we're going to, you know, change engineers potentially too. Correct. So. Yeah, you're right. So I guess you know I I, I don't 
beat a dead horse here, but but we have six months left to finish all of this work and it's gonna be really tight, um, especially if we have to change engineers um, and the holidays don't help in terms of that schedule. But um, I think if we can kind of keep pressing forward with um, the surveyor and, and with town council to try to get some resolution to those two things, hopefully we can try to keep on a schedule. Okay. There was a uh, question on um, back to Kelleher Drive about uh, the power outage. Was there any injuries and um, did um, how long were we out, out of power? Just kind of reassuring the public there was no major problem. It was it a few hours they were out? I think they were out for a few hours, if I remember what Kevin told me correctly. Um, I don't no, think there were any injuries. No. Um, there that. was a delay from Eversource's. Eversource's response was a little bit delayed, but there was a, it was a fairly large response. They've got people isolated one truck to a, to attack. So once they were out there, there was a lot of them out there. Right. And then they just rerouted to some temporary powers in the street. They did a temporary power reroute and yeah. Kevin did some work. Zach did some work and then Zach's got in touch with uh, the higher ups at Eversource that he knew yeah. so that we could start mitigating this beginning of the week. Okay, great. Thank I do you. not believe there were any injuries, at least nothing I was told about. Right. Kevin I'm is prepping for the storm. Otherwise, he probably would have joined oh, us. I'm sure he is. He's got his work cut out tonight. For yeah. Sure. They all do. They better I hope they're all safe tonight. Um, okay. Thank you for that. Anything else on the, so I've I'll got... send an email, Chris. Yeah, well, right. one last thing, Trevor, um, yeah. we, we have two ongoing MVP grants right now and um, the MVP three grant, as I refer to it, the 2019 grant is, is nearly wrapped up. The only thing that's remaining to do on that grant is uh, a rainwater harvesting design for uh, Frontier High School. Yep. Yeah. Time Bond are working on that. I've asked them to kind of accelerate their schedule on the work and they've agreed to do that. So they should be done with that by end of February. And so we'll basically wrap that grant up before the next round of applications start and okay. eliminate one of the one of the problems that we had with our last grant is that we had we had so many ongoing existing grants that they didn't want to fund us for another one. Yeah. Yeah, we need to. We'll, make we'll only have there. one existing ongoing grant by the time the next round comes around. That's great. Yeah, it was too bad we couldn't do that with the students at Frontier. I mean, that was whole, our whole goal, but. Um, well, we are actually, that. amazingly oh. enough, um, Time Bond is working with um, the science teacher. Her name's Christy McLaughlin at, yeah. at Frontier, and they're doing it remotely. Oh, great. Oh, that's good news. Still doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I have oh, to cool. say that the frontier um, teachers are really, um, you know, have been trying to do this um, climate change MVP stuff with us. And they've That's been awesome. trying to adapt, even though with COVID. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been, been great. great. That's good to hear. So that, that's all, all I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yes. Have a nice holiday. And, um, that's everything, right? On the on the MVP yeah. stuff. You you as well. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Chris, Jennifer. Okay. Chris, I saw your email. I'll still try to send you. I'll try to find the document that you requested. I um. It there wasn't much more in that folder, so I'll, I'll talk to Casey about it. Okay. Thanks, Jen. Mm -hmm. Um. So, let's see that. Um. So moving forward, we've got, um, I know we still have our, our public hearings that we still got 25 minutes before that. Um, yep. So uh, did you want to hit on anything? Um, I know we wanted to wait a little bit into six o'clock to talk about COVID and, you know, responses mm -hmm. on that. Um, we could work on um, our annual permits and licensing. The one thing I just, it's not on here. I just wanted to talk about under select board announcements. Um, and it's something that I neglected to put on the schedule. Maybe we can pop it onto the next one, but I wanted to begin discussing the tree uh, the tree work that we need to kind of do around the center of um, 
around town hall. We've um, we had in, engaged a um, arborist to do some evaluation of some trees around town hall that um, with the paving work we're going to need to do, uh, we're, we're going to need to probably take a few down and uh, sure up some others because they're a safety risk to the building and, and to employees and the, where they park their cars and all. So um, I really just wanted to kind of start that conversation so people can be aware that, you know, trees are a touchy subject. So I wanted to kind of start that conversation that we're, we're, uh, we're looking at doing tree work around the town. We do have some, some trees that are kind of close to their end of life cycle and they don't really fit the climate we're in anymore. You know, a couple on the front, Eversource came in or their tree work guys and just kind of lopped off half the trees and, you know, working with the arborist, he said, look, this, you know, you just took all the solar panels off half this tree, probably not going to last. And there are, some of them are on the way out anyway. So we, we had him come in and do a quick evaluation of um, maybe six or seven trees around the town hall. One, we have an, an elm. So we wanted to get, uh, you know, some of the work was uh, treatment for the, or it's an ash, right? The uh, ash borer beetle. Um, so we wanted to get some treatment going on that and uh, some pruning on some other trees and then some cabling of some others to save them. Um, there's a couple of large pin oaks. One, unfortunately, will probably have to come down. It's right, right behind our building. It's, you know, it's right over the ball field and right over our building. And it's right in the middle of where we're going to pave again. So uh, the arborist thought, you know, with all that going on, it's, you know, we're probably going to have to remove that one. So, um, and I think one other one that's really close to the building that's, that's, you know, risking of damaging the building if it drops, but it drops a ton of leaves on it as well and gets, gets all the drainage plugged up. Um, so, uh, I really just wanted to start that conversation tonight. And then next, um, maybe I would uh, get, I, I think I've sent out or John sent out the, the report to all of us, but I think maybe we, I could just get that to you again, Casey, we could throw it up on the webpage. You know, mm -hmm. everybody can kind of have a look at it and um, we could talk about it a little further next meeting. Um, just okay. a couple of meetings to kind of get, the, get just, people aware. Of what I we're just doing. wanted to make sure that we budget I just want to make sure we budget for um, uh, replacement trees that are correct for, you know, going yes. forward with climate change. Yes. We need some more advice. Um, our tree, you know, our tree plan uh, or tree evaluation that we had a few years ago gave us a really good analysis of what trees, you know, most of our trees are healthy yep. in our tree belts around town. We had too much, too many maples, right? And um, but there really wasn't definitive advice on what we should be doing to diversify um, mm -hmm. the, you know, the tree belt. So, yeah, I mean, I maybe we can do mass or I don't know. Well, that arborist Somebody was, needs uh, to help us. That arborist was trees. a lot of help. He had uh, he had some information in there and it really detailed plans and you know, talking about replacement, because we do, we want to get them in the ground. And I would recommend, like you said, budgeting a little bit heftier for some really more mature trees. I mean, you can put in a thin little thing and wait 250 years, or you could start with something that's been out there 15 years or so, you know, a, you know, a decent size uh, tree already um, to, to get started. But you're right, picking the right um, species that is one attractive to the town and you know has some value um, like he said that ash we really want to save that before the that boar beetle is coming right up through and he said if you don't get anything into that he can save it and we won't lose it so as long as we start that treatment process it's like every other year for a couple of years they put that stuff in and, and we won't lose that tree and it'll become very very valuable be one of the last that we you know we have um i think we so, have to keep in mind that we have limited funds particularly yes. and we've got at least three pin oaks that i think they're pin oaks um, yeah. that are creating damage for the town hall and that yeah. needs to be addressed and yes. that you know i do know from experience dealing with trees in other areas that there's a certain point when you take down a certain amount of growth on that tree it will deteriorate to the yeah. point where it needs to come down Right. And so I want everybody to keep that in mind. The other thing is, is we have a tree warden that works, you know, in our department, in our mm -hmm. public works department that's worked closely with the highway superintendent. And they actually had a plan ready to go to do some of this work. And we have limited money. So right. 
This is, that, that is something, and it's not my money. It's the public works department's money. And yeah. we need to be aware of that because it, it has an effect on what we can do and yeah. balancing the criticality of dealing with COVID and the transfers we might run into, depending on what happens with public funds that may or may not be available as of January 1st yep. um, or January 20th or whenever something could happen. Um, we've got to balance what we really need with what mm -hmm. we want. Sure. And yeah. I just want to put that out there because I understand the, I understand there's a need to be climate resilient. On the other hand, I also understand that we have to manage our money. And right now, the bill that's in front of the feds, the Congress, doesn't have a lot of money, if any, for municipalities. And I'm more concerned yeah. about that. Yeah, there's two options before them, one with nothing and one with very little. <laughs> exactly. So, and so um, that we still have to keep running through COVID. Of and course. so, you know, yeah. we're just keep in mind that transfers are things that are out there yep. sort of giving me headaches. Yeah. So that that estimate that we got, we'll get others, but the estimate we have, I think, was 13,000. And that was a couple of year program of treatment and cabling and taking and, and removing. So um, just I just want everybody to review it a little bit further. We get, you know, tied up on multiple things and chasing COVID that um, it, it's hard to kind of keep our eyes on that stuff. But I just want to talk about that a little bit and get people thinking about it. So um, so I'll get that back and we can post that. We could read it again. It's pretty it's pretty interesting stuff. Very well detailed. So. Um, so let's see. Uh, so moving on to you want to do an annual permits and licenses. I know we'll all have to kind of take these votes, but we'll have to go in uh, at our convenience and sign. Um, so I would suggest that the speak. based yeah. on what I understand you guys have done in the past, mm -hmm. um, I would suggest that the liquor licenses, you take a vote to approve that when you take a vote to, to approve those licenses, you specify they need to be wet signatures. Yes. And those licenses are sitting next to Jennifer's on Jennifer's desk next yeah. to her computer. They've all got sign here stickers on them. Um, for the other licenses, class two dealers licenses, entertainment licenses, those types of licenses, um, I think it's reasonable for you to take a vote and indicate that we could use the, the signature stamps for the board members if that's okay with you guys. That's fine. Yeah. I think we've done that in the past. Yeah. That's fine. That makes sense. Um, so do you want me to, I'll make a motion to, um, to approve. And, and so we had for our on-premises uh, liquor licenses, uh, several meetings back, we had um, approved a 25% reduction in the fee for this year for the restaurants because yep. um, of, you know, just the, the, the stress they're under, we want to do everything we could to help and still obviously retain um, revenue for, to keep the town going. But um so uh, I would make a motion to approve the uh, for 2021 renewals of the liquor licenses, and I'll do these in, in sections. So this is all alcohol on premise uh, licenses. Um, so one would be a Gianni's Fig Restaurant LLC. Number two is Historic Deerfield Deerfield Inn. Number three is uh, Hotel Warren. Number four is Leo's Table. Five is Magic Wing uh, Magical Wings Corp. And uh, Number six is uh, PHB uh, Yankee Candle LLC. That's the Powder uh, Hollow Brewery. Uh, number seven is the Tavern Sports Bar. Number eight is the Walk. Um, and number nine is Wolfie's Restaurant. Um, so we'll just do these in sections or do you want me to read the whole thing? No, we can do them in sections. Okay, so I, I, I make that motion for the all on premises, all alcohol. Um, another second. Yeah, this is Carolyn. I'll second that. Any further discussion on any of these? Uh, the only concern I have is so uh, uh, the PHB Yankee. Uh, yep. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Ma Magic Magic Wings Corp. Okay, that's the uh, butterfly place, right? Yep, that's right. butterfly. Yes, yeah. Magic Wings. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I think all these are in order, right? You've gotten all the. I saw all the the applications on the desk, so I think everything's yep. in order. Yep. Um, so, and those are the section 12 on premise pouring all alcoholic, right? Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yep. And then all, uh, all the, all in favor. Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. 
Member McDaniel, aye. Okay, great. So all alcohol, all, all alcohol on premise club. Um, we have one, which is the Polish American Citizens Club. I'll make a motion to approve that. Um, second, Carolyn. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Um, then we have all alcohol off premises. We have two, which is the Deerfield Spirit Shop and Purple Metal Ventures, uh, DBA Deerfield River Liquors. So I'll make a motion, make a motion to approve those. Do have a second? Dave Wolfram, um, a second. Okay. All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Thank you. Um, Did you have to say that those are going to get the wet signatures in the motion, or is all, that our all of all of the alcohol are going to be the wet signatures? Okay, cool. All right. Yep. Yep. And then, um, so uh, let's see. So wine. Uh, this is wine and malt off premises. Um, so no, we have five of these. Um, number one is Bittersweet Bakery and Cafe LLC, uh, Cheslitz Market LLC, Circle K Massachusetts DBA Circle K. Deerfield Convenience Store, and the uh, y, uh, Visam Inc., uh, which is uh, DBA Conway Road Neighbors. So I'll make a motion to approve those five for signature, that signature. Second. And any further uh, discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you, Trevor McDaniel, aye. And we have uh, one wine and malt on premise and that is for uh, Berkshire Brewing Company. I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second that, Dave Wolfram. All those, in, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. A Thank question you. on that one is, uh, yes. Treehouse done anything for applying for liquor licenses? Nope. No, okay. nope. not yet. We haven't received any plans from them. Not okay. yet. Um, so the next uh, section is for uh, class two dealers. Um, these are automobile dealers. Um, we, let's see. Uh, so these, we, we could make a motion, all the rest of the permits and licenses, we can um, apply our stamps to them. The office could apply stamps to keep moving. So um, this would be the class two dealers. Um, so right now uh, we're, we're holding on uh, two feathers restoration design. We have not received uh, renewal yet, request for a renewal on that. So those, that's a hold. Yes, go ahead, Jennifer. So I just got a um, phone call actually while well, the meeting started from my work phone, I was transferred to myself. And it was, um, it was them saying that they never received the application. And- um, Pat and I were afraid of that. I guess they've been some mailing problems. Yes. Um, after the conversation that you and I had, Trevor, when you reviewed the licenses, I asked her to see if she could find an email for them. And apparently she must have. Okay. Um, they have some mailing problems. What we could do is set it up so that they could pick it up and return that to us before the 30th. Okay. Because then we could have you guys address it. And I've actually added um, annual licenses as an item to the agenda on the 30th, just in case. Oh, okay. So we can address it then once they get all yep. set up. Okay, that's great. Yep. Thank you. Um, I have another question about him. He was wondering if the property owner is different than the business owner when it comes to taxes. But we can talk about that later, but he just had a question. You and I can talk about that. All right, yep. thanks. Yep, I don't know that. Um, so uh, let's see. So we have one, two, three, four of these. Uh, so this is uh, Richard uh, Batego, Richard's Automotive at uh, 242 Greenfield Road. We have Greg Gardner, GMG Enterprises at uh, 239A Greenfield Road. We have Gary and Scott Kolakowski, Deerfield Motors and Equipment, which is at 373 Greenfield Road in Deerfield. And then we have uh, Joseph Kostuk Jr., uh, Country Roads on 18 Upper Road, Deerfield. So I'll make a motion to approve those four. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Great, thank you. Um, so we have a class three dealer, and that is uh, James. Uh, 
Byrne Jr., um, East Deerfield Auto Wrecking at 769 River Road in Deerfield. So make a motion to approve that. Uh, Dave Wolf, second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolf, and I. Carolyn Ness, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Uh, we have two funeral directors, which is Harold Risley for Risley's Funeral Home at 90A Sugarloaf Street, South Deerfield, and Lawrence Risley, Risley's Funeral Home, 90A Sugarloaf Street in South Deerfield. I'll make a, a second on that, Carolyn. Okay, and um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolf, am I? Carolyn Ness, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Uh, then we have home business renewals. Um, Lisa Berger, uh, Deerfield Healing Arts is at 194 North Main Street. We have Richard Floyd for Pioneer Frameworks uh, by the book, 63 Grave Street, South Deerfield. Peter R. James, attorney Peter James, uh, Peter Richard James and Catherine J. James Consulting at 40 Captain Lathrop Drive, South Deerfield. We have Elaine Mont, which is uh, Deerfield Therapeutic Massage, 31 Lee Road in South Deerfield, Mass. And Robin Lafleur, uh, Salon 68 at 68 Lee Road in South Deerfield. Make a motion to approve all of those. One, two, three, five of those. Dave Wolfram. Thank you. Any further discussion? And all those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn S. I. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Um, Trevor, before you move on, um, on the home business renewals, we've over the year we've had several complaints of people running businesses out of their homes. Mm -hmm. um, I'd just like the board to direct Casey um, to work with um, Bob Walden and, and to just send um, letters to um, the couple of businesses that we receive complaints on. And okay. If, if they're conducting home businesses, um, they need to come forward and do the renewals. I mean, or, you know, apply. Put, apply apply and then we it's an entire to, process yes we need to sort it out have a public hearing and the whole thing otherwise yeah. they are definitely in violation and we need to send letters to cease and desist okay thank you yep i i, I agree with that for sure um so the then we have uh, an entertainment yearly um and this may be had lost in the mail too but william swayze uh for uh yankee candle company usually has three of them, but um, we have not received any renewal receipt, you know, request yet. So either it might be an overlook or a, or they're just, you know, not planning to do that this year. Um, so we just have to follow up on that, I guess. That's just a note. Um, and then Robert uh, Patrizzi was the Tavern Sports Bar LLC at Two Seat Elm Street in um, South Deerfield. So that, and then, uh, yeah, that's it for yearly entertainment. So I'll make a motion to approve the Tavern Sports Bar, LLC. Dave Wolf, I'm second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Dave Wolf. Dave okay. Wolf. Oh, sorry. <laughs> aye, Carolyn Ness. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Thank you. We have an uh, annual resident auctioneer, Douglas Billadu for Douglas Auctioneers, LLC at 241 Greenfield Road. I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second that. Any Dave further Wolf, discussion? Wolf. All those in favor? Dave Wolf, I'm aye. Carolyn Ness, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. And then we have an annual non-resident auctioneer, uh, which is um, Michael Bedruitz uh, Jr. is Catamount uh, Auction Company, LLC, yeah. at 42, Shelburne, uh, 42 Church Street, Shelburne Falls. I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second that. Dave Wolfram. All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, Aye. Carolyn, uh, Carolyn Ness, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Thank you very much. I think that is it at this so moment. So are we going to address a New England auctioneer? Well, uh, do so I'm not sure what, the, so is that a, uh, that would be an, a resident auctioneer, right? And and I see a note that they don't have a permit. Is that one of the ones that you were talking about, Carolyn, that we need to uh, address? One, one of the several complaints that we've had over the year. Yeah. Okay. So we need to we need to just jump on that and see, find out what's what's happening and which one is that one again? Uh, it is uh, New England Auctioneer, two twenty okay. Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass. We just need to make sure that they're permitted and um... then also, uh, <coughs> yeah. And there was a couple other ones. We don't need to have that. No, nope, no. Nope. 
I, you no. can let me know off offline, Carolyn. Okay. okay. Okay, cool. Thanks. Sounds good. Um, so the next, so, so that takes care of that, uh, the licenses and we'll come into sign, uh, wet sign on all the alcoholic ones. Um, this uh, next item is the, um, let's see, we have for time, a couple of minutes. So um, we're going to consideration to uh, propose, uh, postpone annual town meeting to June. And this might be just a kind of a first read and discuss, right? Um, yes. I'll just read this memorandum from, from Casey, the town administrator, and she uh, has sent this out to the finance committee, capital, <coughs> capital improvement planning committee, uh, Barbara Hancock, the treasurer, town collector, town clerk, Brenda Hill, town accountant, Daniel Graves is the moderator, Lisa Mead is town council. So at this point with such uncertainty around COVID-19 and the impacts on all business, uh, I respectfully request that the select board consider postponement of annual town meeting until June 2021. Uh, as you, you'll note, uh, I've carbon copied several individuals on the committees of this request. We've encountered delays to the town budget process and may see delays in budget preparation from the state. Um, we, are, uh, we all continue to scrutinize revenues and watch the process on the federal level. And to date, the evolution of firm information has taken quite some time. Uh, before the select vote board decides, I hope you receive feedback from various stakeholders, which will be very informative. Thank you for this request. So um, so I can tell you, I did get some feedback. From council, um, right? I think it's I got some feedback from council and from um, the town clerk and for, from the moderator. Okay. And so I will read to you what Lisa sent, Lisa Mead sent to me. Okay. So they agree, Lisa and Dan agree that general laws, chapter 39, section nine provides in part, and I I'm quoting, mm -hmm. however, that notwithstanding the provisions of this section or any other law by law or charter to the contrary, a town by the vote of its board of selectmen or town council may delay the annual town meeting and provided further that such delayed annual town meeting shall complete its business on or before June 30th. Her suggestion, end quote, her suggestion is at this point, I would say the board could vote and announce that they will be delaying annual town meeting and will announce a date certain later. Okay. That announcement and setting of that date should happen before the regular town meeting. So everyone is aware of the schedule. And so I had forwarded yeah. this out and, said to everybody, okay, here's some feedback. I wasn't actually expecting it this quickly. Mm -hmm. um, here's some feedback. It would be worthwhile to say to everybody, take a vote to say, okay, we're going to delay. We will advise you based on our budget process and conversations with key committees that are and, mm -hmm. and department heads and the moderator and all of the, all of us, this big, yeah. huge group of people we are. Mm -hmm. um, that we will come up with a schedule further into the new year. Yeah, I think that makes so, sense. And, mm -hmm. and if you don't wanna do it tonight, that's fine. I just want yeah. everybody to understand that there is definitely a reason. I know that Skip had reached out, the chair of the finance Yeah, committee. and that's been in the back of my head. About this and thinking, you know, with vaccines coming and we may be oh, able yeah. to be a little bit, you know, safer by the time we get there. And plus, you know, we're, I don't know, did we even, I don't even think we got FY20 from the state yet, so. We, oh, yeah. they're still, they were discussing they're it the close. last time I looked yeah. and that was, yeah, I have to say Monday. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, they haven't even begun 2021 yet. So I, I think, you know, we 2022 or 2020, the only person yeah. that's thinking 2022 is the governor, Yeah. but I haven't looked to see if he's got anything published. He right. may have it. I just haven't looked yeah. for it. Right. I've been focused on cares and FEMA and a bunch of other things. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but I do think it's worthwhile considering. And I think, Dan may or may not agree. So if you want to put this off to the next yeah, we can, meeting. Yeah, we can wait until the 30th to make a decision. I, I think it was important to start talking about it and letting people understand that this is something we're thinking about and it gives people a little time, but. Um, I, let me, I, would like to, I would like to wait just because, um, you know, there's no rush for number one. Right. And number two, we uh, more than likely are going to delay anyway, but how big that delay is, we don't know because. Well, no. that's why she's saying you could take a vote now to say that we are going to delay and Wait Waitley's actually done this already. Mm -hmm. um, take a vote now to, to a date um, notify people that we will be delaying. We just don't have a date certain yet. 
Yeah. I'm okay with that. The only reason I want to just take our time in picking a date for the delay is because we want to have an opportunity to coordinate with at least our four towns so that the mm -hmm. school budget, which right. is a majority of our costs, are coordinated um, you know, with the school committees. Right. Um, right. There's no sense. Oh, we lost her. We again. lost her. Hold on. It'll come back. Yep. We get your point though. Yeah, it makes sense to um to well I'm thinking if we did do this, because I did talk to Brian Domina and Wheatley about it. Yep. Um and we notify the schools, it may give them some flexibility too. Yeah. That's my thought. That. Um well, we're usually reading a budget by now and, and we didn't even have one last meeting, so I mean, no, I and that's, meeting, yeah, but. I'm thinking you guys might be late as well. Yep. So, um, okay. well, we can make a vote on this or, or, you know, discuss it again on the 30th. Does that make sense? At least we've got yes. people talking makes about sense it. To me. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. So I will add this to the 30th. Okay. Sounds good. Or I'll write my note, I'll write myself a note to add it to the 30th. Great. <laughs> well, I think we're going to have more realistic budget projections at some point. Whereas right now, everybody's just going to throw out numbers that are recycled from last year. And, yeah. and, and those yep. numbers are kind of hokey because we don't even have a state budget. So. Right. Yep. Okay. Well, it's 6.02. I'm, uh, I will open the hearing for the Deerfield Select Board acting in their capacity as the solar commissioners will hold a public hearing during the regular scheduled meeting on December 16th, 2020 at 6 p.m. to set the FY21 sewer rates. Um, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required uh, public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, general law, uh, mass general law, chapter 30, a section 20. Um, so this is, and the quote, the actual link there is all the same. If you're it, here well, at the meeting, it, this is all the same information. We actually put already, the link so. up so people could come straight to the meeting because we noticed there was a flaw in that link, but it was down a month ago. And oh, good. It just <laughs> we're here. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just say that um, the meeting ID. Yeah, meeting that's the part is the ID meeting ID. Is 911 yeah. It's not, yep. though. And that's the, the problem. <laughs> and the passcode is 57. Oh, but it's I not. Gotcha. That's the problem. Well, we're the same. same <laughs> we're all in the same place. Yep. And so the one good thing was I said during the the regular select board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only good thing. Yeah. Well, I'll just kind of. Uh, I guess you know really what we're here tonight. We started discussing this a couple weeks back, and um, tonight uh, we've had the readings from the water department, and we are are setting our um, commitment. Uh, commitment one for the billing for FY21. Um, I'll just read this. Uh, this is a um, to the treasurer tax collector, um, December 16th, uh -oh. 2020, utility billing, uh, FY uh, 2021, commitment one. You are hereby authorized to collect from the 939 bills named on the commitment with the amount set against their respective names, amounting in the aggregate of 700. $75,947.50 to pay all uh, to pay over all monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and to make a report of such payment to the town accountant. So this would be uh, the sewer service of, uh, let's see, nine, three, uh, let's see, I want to guess gallons, I'm trying to, or let's see, I'm trying to think of this here. There's 93,900, I think those are the units. Um, there's 662, uh, oh, this was the, okay. Service fee was 93,900 and the sewer uh, fee is $662,047.50, totaling $755,947.50. Uh, sewer consumption was 45,641,155 gallons of usage. So I'd make a motion to, um, to approve this um, and ask the um, treasurer to collect, uh, collect, the collector to collect and 
give to the treasurer. Sh shouldn't you vote your sewer rate first? Oh yeah, sure. Well, I'll get there too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we had um, we have been working on you know for everybody knows for the last couple of years our sewer um, our sewer projects and we have an enterprise fund now that we have started a few years ago. Um, so our um, our proposed FY21, and I'll, I'll also talk about our FY22 rate. We're not setting that rate today, but I have that rate for people to be aware of um, because we're really only raising money for FY21. Uh, um, so the, the proposed sewer rates uh, would, and there is no change, and I would recommend no change to the fixed um, fees uh, for, for per billing. Um, but the FY21 rate would be 14.36. Or a thousand gallons. <clears throat> We're looking at FY22 of 16.38 per thousand gallons, but we're not setting that rate tonight. Um, some of the issues that, you know, we had a, a meeting with the engineers on a lot of the stuff that we're doing, which is the, um, <clears throat> which is uh, the plan for phase one of the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant and phase two coming up <clears throat> as well, the design on that. Um, just speaking of which our bidding went out for the parts. Um, so bidding is out right now for the parts, uh, some of the part components like the clarifier and some of the screening systems that we had uh, selected in our, in our design process. So those are out first for a, for a bid. And then of course the labor and everything will go up to bid right around the end of the year, beginning of, beginning of, um, of 2021. So, cause right now our, you know, as of November 20th or so, our, our design for phase one is around 75 complete. Um, we're doing ongoing uh, coordination and design phase meetings with, with town staff. We anticipate that completion in early 2021. Uh, phase one bidding and construction, bidding anticipated in early 21, construction commence anticipated it's summer of 2021 for, for phase one. Um, and now phase two upgrades, we hope to apply for a USDA grant, another application in spring of 2021 and to design over the summer of 2021. Um, we also have the collection systems uh, CMOM program, which is just all that, um, you know, closed circuit TV uh, running through all the all the sewer lines in town, which has been a, which has been a huge project. So that uh, the CCT, uh, TV inspection of Old Deerfield and South Deerfield collection systems is ongoing. Um, we anticipate a completion in spring of 2021. We also are looking at an Old Deerfield uh, wastewater conditions and needs study. So that's evaluation of interconnection from Old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant to South Deerfield uh, wastewater treatment plant. So that's commencing in uh, right about now. Uh, that's starting, that project is starting now with anticipated completion in early 21 as we evaluate, evaluate, you know, what do we do with the old Deerfield plant? You know, a lot of this stuff we've talked about and the, the votes we've taken and the money we've raised has been all focused on South Deerfield while old Deerfield is still in just, you know, just as bad shape, if not worse. Um, it just doesn't have as much load as we have in, uh, in, in the South Deerfield plant. So the, the thought is, do we repair, do we connect? So all of that's happening to, to find out what it would take to pump that to South Deerfield and, and maybe bring in uh, other users along five and 10 or other areas of, uh, of town. So um, all that long winded, um, you know, we have, um, we have, we have set a, a rate of that 14.36 uh, per thousand gallons. That is about a 16% increase over last year. Um, and we're looking at probably next year of um, a 16.38% um, per thousand. And that is 16.38 um, 16, 16 per thousand. And that's about a 14% increase, will be a 14% percent increase over this year. And that's about where we are, you know, back when we started looking at this project, uh, we told sewer users uh, and town residents that the rates were going to be going up over these several years. Um, and to get to that, to get to that spot, um, it was going to take several years of an increase to get there. And that, that should cover our costs for all of the work we, we plan to do. So, um, so I, again, so, so Trevor, this is Chris yeah. Harris. Um, hey, Chris. 
just very just to make that very clear to mm-hmm. to townspeople and sewer users yes is that on track with what you projected when we all approved this yeah so uh back um back at the annual town meeting on april 29 2019 we projected um an average uh average annual resident sewer cost of about uh 1116 i think by 2022 um if we set the rate at that rate next time we should be around 1133 bucks so we're a couple of bucks it might be around a couple bucks more but we won't really know until we get there but yes we are on track of you know where we were to where we're going to go um i think we're we're still on track for where we you know where we told everybody we would be so um so no major surprises. No major surprises at this time. You know, we're we're just get obviously just getting into the project. But yes, for as far as like how we wanted to raise funds um, and build up our our retained earnings. Um, you know, right now we need to build up that retained earnings because we have you know fairly large bills coming forward. So instead of having it all hit at one time when we need it, we're raising that money to be able to um, not have such a shock in one year to everybody. Uh, so we're raising that up so that we can fund, you know, we already had to pull out, um, you know, interim financing before we get our, our grant uh, money and get the project rolling. The town had to borrow some money to pay for engineering, uh, all anticipation that that'll get rolled into the 40 year uh, USDA grant, but, um, and loan program. But um, yeah, so we, we feel like we're right in that, right in that sweet spot of where we, we plan to be. So um, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And and we're we're really curious to see where the bidding comes in. You know, I, I know that um, it's been a really, really all over the place as far as materials go. I mean, so just on a side note, this is way off the topic of, of sewers, but it's kind of related to bidding is that, you know, we're looking to to do the just the chain link fence backboard at the um, at the Sunderland, I mean, the, the, the Deerfield Elementary School kind of that ball field right there, it's deteriorating and it's time to replace that. We can't really get a solid bid because every couple of days, the price on that steel fencing changes. Um, and so there's another price change, a price hike coming in, um, I think on the 30th. So just when we go out to look at these jobs and we, you know, we start the design work several years ago, you know, with COVID hitting and the steel prices changing and tariffs and all of that stuff, you know, your prices are all over the place. That's why you have contingency. But I, even with all that said, I think we're still in a good spot. I'm just very curious to see where the uh, where the bids kind of come in on the, on this stuff. We did very good on the clarifier. When we did that project, we came in, I think, under budget, on time. You know, that, that worked out very well. We had a good team on that. Um, so we're hoping that, you know, that continues and we, and we do very well on this large first phase of the large project as well, but we'll, we'll keep everybody in the loop as it, as it all comes along. So that was all really long winded, but I would make a, you know, make a motion to approve the sewer rate for FY 21. Um, River? At, uh, do we want I... to get any public? Oh yeah, or... sure. Yeah, please. You have the hand up. Um... Yeah, please talk. Anybody. Uh, hi, this is Bruce St. Peter's from Snowberry hey. Circle. How are you? I am fine, Trevor. How about yourself and I'm the rest good. of you as well? It's so nice to hear your voice. Hi, Bruce. Yes, you, you too. It'd be nice to see you in person for a change, too. Even better. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> um, yeah. I had a couple questions, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned a clarifier, and also there's uh, you know the other things that, that they're coming due. Um, the clarifier, I'm assuming that has been paid for, or is it going to be of the 22 budget, or what? Yeah, and so that goes through the design as in the administration. I am assuming you're hiring a, a, a Prickett for doing the administration for uh, soliciting all the bids and reviewing them and all that stuff. Where yeah. is that being paid from, and what budget is that? Twenty one or twenty two? So I believe the uh, the sewer, yeah, the clarifier, the emergency clarifier was um, was paid for already i believe right we we did a um and i wish brenda was here to answer this but mm. that wasn't part of this that wasn't part of this project um, it wasn't part of the usda this that's was right. done it was done previous and i believe yes we did um we are working on that bills, 
I know I've signed off on warrants for a lot of that work already. So mm -hmm. I believe that was uh, that was paid for, and we borrowed the thing in that? front of me. I was positive we borrowed on that uh, some, but I could get some better answers for you when I talk to uh, to Brenda. Well, that, okay. well what I'm what I'm getting at is uh, the uh, how did the town. Uh, appropriate there 25 percent or is that going to be in the, this coming budget or what i think we already did uh i don't remember a line item for that in the past year's budget let, for let the me, uh I, you know i it was talking around a million dollars so it'd be about a two hundred fifty thousand dollar uh, uh contribution yes. by the time. i'm looking yeah. hold on i remember we did i talking with brenda i remember we had i'm looking decided to put that forward already we did. Um, we had operational reserves. You know what, Bruce? Can you shoot me an email and I'll check in with Brenda? Yeah. Okay. I thought we did, but I can't find it off the top of my head. I'm almost positive. Okay. So my next question would be: mm -hmm. Now that we're going to start coming into the big bills, yep. and uh, has the uh, sewer commissioners? Uh, approached any of the not-for-profits and tax exempt for contributing part and parcel uh, of their share because unfortunately the 25 percent by the town will be raised by taxation yes and yeah. since they are all exempt they would not have to contribute correct and yeah. it is a very it's a, it, it adds up it, you it know shows. if we use 20 million that you know it's lopsided right <laughs> You know, yep. you use approximately 20 million, which is, I think it was 19 approved. Um, I did a little math, and right now, the valuation of the town uh, in its total, uh, tax exempt as well as uh, taxable properties in this town, is about 1.1 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, the taxable properties, uh, including personal property, is about 775.8 million. So we have about 29.3% that is tax exempt. Yes. Of that, 20% uh, is educational alone. Sure. Meaning not for, not for profits and so forth. And if we use approximately, you know, 20 million, and uh, uh, in, in, if the town were to pay 5%, and if we solicited the educational for their 5%, uh, 25%. Uh, since they're about 20%, that would on a $20 million thing, uh, which would be $5 million by the town, it, it, their contribution would be approximately a million dollars. And that's just mm -hmm. the educational. This is over right. you know, a 20 year. And I, but yep. so I'm just, yes. you know, so it's a very substantial. And I'm just wondering if the yes. sewer commissioners have made any effort whatsoever to yeah. uh, ask for contributions to, uh, you know, to uh, help subsidize the. Uh, uh, the town portion, the twenty-five percent. Yes, I um I, I have been in, yeah I have been in talks with uh, we have been in talks with with all of them. They're very anxious to want to help us, and they you know they also have a big liability up there as well, um, and we haven't begun to address you know their needs at that end of town. Um, I did uh, get approval for um for them to pay for the engineering to um to fund, you know, to, to look at moving that to, um, to look at studying whether we pump, you know, de decommission that and pump that to South Deerfield. Um, so they're, they're going to, they're going to take on that, that study, uh, which is great. Um, and, and then they are anxious to, to help us. So I think really it's a, we're in the evaluation stage of what we really need to do and where they're going to be able to help. But yes, they, they are interested in helping. And I've talked to, uh, and all of, you know, uh, all, all the different nonprofits up, up there all want to be involved and they're all anxious to, uh, to help us as well. So yes, that, that conversation is happening. I don't have a, a, you know, a dollar amount or anything yet, other than that they're willing to, to do some of the hard work up front. Um, that helps us because we, we really weren't in the position to fund that right now. So they said they, they would take care of that part of it. And then they'll, they'll also look at, um, you know, what it what it says when it's done and what's needed and i think i think we'll we'll be in good partnership with them to help us throughout this project 
Well, it's it's not just the schools. It's uh, you know it's uh, yep. historic Clearfield, yes, PVMA, they're, they're all at the, table. The, rela- the all the religious organizations yep. and everything else. They're all at the uh, table, Bruce. Yep. Very good. Yep, that was my all question. All Th- thank you. Thank yep. you for your efforts. Well, thank you. Thanks. For, thanks for coming to the meeting. So. Yep. Um, so right, I, I was jumping the gun there to approve. We need to close the meeting first. I'm new to this, all right. So uh, this takes me a while. Um, so are there any other questions during the public hearings? Or anybody, uh, Jen? Is there any other hands up? Is anybody else? There's nothing. Chris? Nobody else's hands are up. So Chris, do you have I mean, anything? Chris or? Curtis's. I mean, or Chris, Chris Harris's hands yeah, up. Yeah, he might. No, it's not. Okay. Oh, I'm fine. You're a good. <clears throat> So his, um, his box is lit because he made a noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, well, I didn't want to miss the comment. Yeah, no, we're always good to good to hear anybody's comments on this. This is a big project, and you know we've worked hard on it. We're still working hard. We're having meetings constantly on, you know, getting the USDA what they need twice. Um, <laughs> Casey could twice, uh, twice. Um, so they ahead. had some changeover in staff. So we, we've been working on that. Yeah. Uh, so um, I just want to mention to Bruce that um, he might he might have missed it at the beginning of the meeting, but um, Dave Prickett had put together the MVP part of um, the sewer plan too. So that we'll you know we're going to put that in when we're ready. The timeline is ready. We'll apply for a grant for that. Try and get some of that paid for as well. That was, there was yeah there was between a hundred and three hundred thousand potential. Mm-hmm. that we could get through the MVP program. So that will help a little bit. Yep. And there's got to be other places. There's got to be other stuff. Hopefully, you know. Well, I'm hoping this is going to be shovel ready for our infrastructure project mm-hmm. and we can just move it forward um, immediately. Yeah. Um, or the old Deerfield or the other. So yep. there's no additional cost to us. That'd be great. That would be great. We'll keep looking. Um, so if there's no other questions, I would... Uh, make a motion to close the hearing. I'll second that. Dave Wolfram. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Governor McDaniel, aye. Okay, so I would make a motion to um, set the FY21 uh, sewer rate. Um, so a couple of things are, are trying to think if I don't think I have it handy, but there, I was trying to figure the connection rates and all those fixed fees and minimum usage are not changing from the last year. I don't have that in front of me at the they moment. They are not. Uh, none of that's changing. Just our, None of just that our is rate. changing. Um, and just some, some information, you know, this has been a crazy year as far as usage go. All year, nobody's been in old Deerfield, right? So our usage is way down up there because none of the kids are there. Um, however, um, you know, all, all the, uh, and, and then so in our schools, like um, Frontier, Deerfield Elementary, the sewer bills are, are, are next to nothing because nobody's been there all year. Um, and this has been that, you know, the, the, the time that we would have been in school is really this billing cycle. Um, however, everybody's been at home. So the usage at home tends to be up. Um, but there's been a, there's been a lot of, um, and I'll, I'll get to the next part. We have a lot of abatements because in this billing cycle, we, we only charge, um, 125% of what their last usage was the winter usage was in summer because people wash their cars and, you know, fill the pool and water the plants and water the lawn, that kind of thing. So, um, so we do have quite a bit in, um, abatements, which I'll get to after this. So, um, so motion, uh, to, um, put the um, rate for FY21 at $14.36 per 1,000 per 1, gallon. Dave Wolfram, second. Any further discussion? It's $14.36, correct? $14.36 is what I have here. Yep. Per 1,000 gallons. Yes, for FY21. And just a note, FY22 will be 1638, but we're not setting that tonight, but just giving people a heads up down the road. Um, so any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Great, thank Trevor, you. Trevor, did you make the motion? I did. Okay, I yes, just want to make sure. Yep, Dave seconded it. Okay. Um, so I will make a motion to um, hereby authorize to collect 
from the 939 bills named in the commitment with the amount set against their respective names amounting in the aggregate of $775,947.50 to, uh, to pay over all monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and to make a report of such payment to the town accountant for 2021 commitment number one. I have a second on that. Um, I just had a question. Sure. Um, I just had a question. Sure. Um, that is that the total, and then we do the abatements of one hundred forty-seven thousand. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. I, I just wanted to make sure the math was correct. That's correct. Yep. That's that's the commitment I have from Barb, and then I have another uh, okay. another to do all the abatements. Yep. So do I have a second? Okay. Dave Wolfram, second. Thank you. All those in uh, any Dave further discussion? Second. Yep. All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Um, thank you very much. And then if you get a chance, stop in and sign, you know, ink, ink the, I think they're on Jen's desk. Um, they are. So they are. The, yeah, the, next item, desk. the next item are all the abatements. Um, there are about 290 different um, you know, bill payers getting abatements. And this is again, just based on water usage. And, and uh, we, again, because of the, the program we have, we only charge 125% of their winter usage. Again, just I explained all that a few minutes ago, but the abatements range from, you know, $25 and 58 cents to, um, you know, over $6,000, and ninety seven cents for a total of $147,370 and 70 cents. Um, so I um, will make this motion as of December 16, 2020. The select board hereby authorizes the abatement of the above sewer accounts for a single family homeowner, single family owner occupied properties above 125% of their own winter consumption for the FY21 commitment number one, totaling $147,370.70. Dave Wolfram seconded it. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Um, and this is, um, so our minimum amount, let's see, adjusted abatement amount to, I think it's $80 was our minimum um, original abatement amount. Yeah, okay. So I think that's our minimum usage. So, um, I don't have all those other and the sewer hookups, everything else stayed the same. So that's all I have for sewer. And then um, that. So the next item on the agenda is the Nexamp contract uh, for voting purposes. Do, uh, do you want to hit on that, Casey? Yes, uh, I will hit on that. that. Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> essentially, um, after much discussion and back and forth, um, the only real change to what we had discussed in the past was the section that, and I got to fiddle around with something, but basically the only change was um, the early termination. And we went back and, for and forth on early termination. We had discussed at length the lease, how the lease is balanced with the other portions of the, the, the electrical. So there's this balancing act that happens. And I wish Beth was here to explain it. She's so you much know, better than me. She is good. So, but we've talked about it numerous times. Um, really, we were drilling down to certain language in the contract that we had that uh, Deerfield Renewables, high, uh, parentheses, next amp had some concerns about in terms of liability and stuff. So we've ironed that language out. Um, they are going to give us wet signatures and I didn't get them by today, but I spoke to council about that. 
and she wants wet signatures in our hands before you vote or before you sign. Mm -hmm. However, she did give us an example vote that she wants you to take so that once we get those wet signatures, you guys could sign at your convenience. And that's, and, the, um, that's in the bold on your memorandum? Yes, right? that's in the bold okay. on my memo. Yep. Do you want me to read that? Sure, if you want to. Okay, so um, this is... Um, Move to authorize the chair to execute the lease with Deerfield Renewables LLC (parentheses Nexamp) for the installation of a solar facility at the landfill located at 42 Lee Road, as presented, and after Deerfield Renewable executes same. Yes. So they have to execute first. We yep. will get the wet signature copy from them. Copies from them. You, um, the chair, will execute. If that's how, you know, the chair would execute as soon as we get this yep. and then we scan it and turn it around so that um, council can execute it as well. Right. And so basically, I guess this has been going on and correct me if I'm wrong. I guess this has been going on for at least a year and a half. Um, oh, and the negotiations were fairly years. more than intense. That. More yeah. than that. 20 years. <laughs> and I have to thank, I have to thank Lisa and Ben and Beth Green, uh, Greenblatt. Yes. for their assistance. Beth is our technical person that really facilitates this on, an, on a statewide basis. And she's incredibly good at the nuances and communicating with the solar companies. But we did run into some issues and we wanted to make sure that we preserve the needs that we have around the landfill itself because we have action we have to take on that. And, and protect the town really that's that's the main reason we put a contract together is to protect the town but also be able to put this type of solar field up yeah. um, as a benefit because we will receive lease money on it and and um, it's good for the town right it is good for the town it's just taken a lot longer and so yep. I've had to through the benefit of their knowledge I've gotten up to speed to some extent um, but it's still a bit of a challenge for me because I've never done one of these. So yeah. no, this is um, I spent a lot of time working with them and we benefited from their, their assistance. And you did, there was one point where we did have some um, executive session discussion yep. with council because of the terms that we were concerned yeah. about. And so the result that you see in your hand in your paperwork is... Um, yeah, this is all of those conversations and guide legal guidance and technical assistance that got us here. So I want to really make sure that Casey, that I sh take that I, shout out to them. What I want to know is how much money we're going. This contract is going to produce for us, and it depends on what the. Yeah. It depends on several factors, Carolyn. So first of all, we don't have the interconnect. They've done study work up to somewhere in the neighborhood of hundred thousand dollars. They've next amp is put into this so that they can get to the interconnect okay? okay the interconnect is the key piece of it however much that costs is going to play in to the next piece which is the the what do they call it the tranche that we fall into yeah, the block. when that yeah. interconnect is completed and this the solar field is built Right. And I so had, I thought we had a minimum already. It's in your, it's in, it's actually in your paperwork. The last few documents in your paperwork right. show the, all the rates. potential rates right. that we could get versus the lease and, and the lease and potential rates balance themselves. So depending on what tranche you fall into, you might be, we might be bringing more in lease in, income versus the, the other side of that in the the electrical but I, I think i have this right it's well over a hundred thousand a year right it's, yeah it depends on the tranche we fall in right exactly. but we've got to get was, through the interconnect it, and everybody needs to understand actually i it, thought the uh, ballpark was going to be around uh, max out around 342. That, that's what i was thinking too but that, it depends on the tranche we fall in right that was if everything was favorable what i wanted right. to know is what was the minimum and when do we start collecting? Well, the thing that we wanted to work on, we need to figure out what the interconnect is first, but the fir before we can go any further, you guys have to sign this. And yeah. so if you look at the different tranches that are identified in, and I'm, I'm trying to scroll to find it. 
The reason why I'm interested, Casey, is because this will impact our revenue forecasts for this coming year. It yeah. will. So I wanted to make sure that we were being realistic and not using the 342, which is what we are hoping. No, we don't that think we'll be there. Beth Greenblatt thinks we'll be less than that. But I think it. she really did caution us to say, it depends on the tranche we fall in and yep. we won't be able to move forward any further until we sign the contract and yep. figure out what the interconnect is. And then they okay. find out. Because that gives us a, a construction timeline. Yep. All right. all right. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a real moving target, but it, uh, all in all, it's very beneficial for the town. This is Brownfield. This is like perfect spot for a, oh, no, I, no, agree, I know you're on board for, you, this was, you led this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just you did. I want money. I know you do. I know. And so we would love to see some money to hit the coffers the beginning of the next fiscal year, but we can't guarantee and we don't have enough information to be able to even project that right now. And I would say one thing to everybody. This no matter what happens with the lease income, and I think Trevor, we might have asked this question with Lisa Mead at one point. No matter what happens with the revenues, there is an opportunity to at least take a portion of that and stock it away towards something that yeah. we really know we're going OPEB. to have to fund. And OPEB, OPEB is one of those things. Yeah. I know. So I'm just throwing my plug in. Because yeah. <laughs> it's a finite, it's 20 years. It's not like, exactly. um, you know, this is ongoing forever. So, I mean, no. it would be nice to renew at some point, but but at least we know that that money is money that we're not taxing people for. It's guaranteed money coming right. in once we get it settled. And we can take a portion of that and start dealing with our unfunded liability of, of OPEB. I think it's- And really, so one and thing- other programs. One, well, the thing is, is they always say, try to, sh try to take, I shouldn't say they, let me refine who I mean by they. <laughs> um, often the recommendation from DLS is to take funds like these that have a finite length of time mm -hmm. and dedicate them to a program to, in this case, an unfunded liability, something that you know you will have to build over a period of time, but you take a portion or that money mm -hmm. and suck it towards that because it alleviates the need to use it for another function that could change. This, right. you know, our unfunded liability actually actual calculation will change. The need to put the money away will not. Right. Or, and if you remember, the cog is going through this right now. Yes. And if you wind up putting in money, um, you know, it's not a it's not money that you would then start a program that you would get used to and then have to find a way to fund after right. years. You want to just kind of use you want to put it into something you know you are going to have to pay for. Yeah. Over a so long term about period. That down down the road but and we can get some more information because the way we draft that in terms of the functional allocation of the money um if i recall i think lisa suggested that we do an article yeah. when we get further down the road yeah okay so all um, right do you need um so i would I suggest that. that you take the vote that i outlined and that's directly yeah. from lisa so again i'll, I'll read that again because we've had a lot of discussion so um, this is uh, the recommended motion. I move to um, authorize the chair to execute the lease with Deerfield Renewables LLC (parentheses Nexamp) for the installation of a solar facility at the landfill located at 42 Lee Road, as presented, and after Deerfield Renewables executes same. April and second. Any further discussion? Any questions? All those in favor? Dave Wolf from I. Carolyn Ness, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Before we move on to the next item, yep. can I just ask, yep. um, people have been receiving letters from Next Amped, and is there anybody on the Energy Committee that can talk to them, because uh, talk about it? I'm, I'm not really sure what is out there, but it's something about, you know, how to save money with solar, you know, buying solar power or something like that well keep in mind we have another project on set right road that was again predates me and we just worked on at annual town meeting that was mm -hmm. that smaller old frontier three project uh, okay it might have to do with that i don't know if they're in the the stages of looking for clients or something looking well, for clients for the for the solar on the landfill 
Okay, so what I'm what I'm going to do is tell people if they have questions on the letters they've received to contact you, so you you can figure out what the letters say. Yeah, if they want to send me a copy of a letter, that would be helpful. I can try to figure it out and, or help find somebody to help me figure it I was out. Just say, maybe somebody from the energy committee could reach yeah. out to yeah. um, yep. people in the community that have questions. Sure. It's, it's just with, you know, so much happening with COVID. I, I mean, I haven't even been able to focus on that as right. far as, you know, what those letters mean. So it's just, I had gotten a couple phone calls. And so if, if you could sort that yeah. out, I'd appreciate that. At least get, if I can get some information, I can direct them to who can help us better. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So uh, the next item on the agenda is a third party landfill inspection report, review and yes. signature. So I did review that report and it looks like we just need to put up one sign. Um, and, and actually, um, Jan Amin has the sign, we'll supply it. We just have to put it up. And that was really just, um, I, I read through all of this and the, I, I believe, unless I'm wrong, the only thing that was needed, um, let me find it here. There was um, one section that talked about a sign on the side of, I know I can find that. It was on the side of the, of the recycling, like what to throw and what not to throw out. Yeah, hold on. Is it? I know. Yeah. Let's see if I have the. It was in the, it was in the, it was in the body of the report, right? Yes, yes, it was. And I don't, I don't know why I saw it, it on the desk, but I don't item see 12 it. and 13, I thought was what that was, but don't quote me. Yeah. It was like pages three, uh, four and five, which <laughs> conveniently are not here. <laughs> I go to three. Oh, come on. Oh, I sure tried. Sure. Yeah, Actually, that's that's really true. I know we have them somewhere, but really it was all it was, was just, Hold you know, on. everything else was, was stellar there. The only thing was we needed like what to throw out, what not to throw out on one of the, um, the trash compactors, just a new sign. And she said, she'll supply it. Our guys will put it up. Other than all that, right, I'm looking. we're good to go. <laughs> we're missing, we're missing um, pages four through four, seven. Four through and seven. I'm that's, sure that's that was where the sign thing was. It but Jan was do it and maybe the sign's already up i don't know yeah it could but be it could be that quick i, I would i would say we, we should make a motion to vote yes. uh sign this I'm looking for four okay <laughs> i'm looking at it on on the the packet so i'm trying to find it <laughs> so i'd make a so motion. people don't uh, don't think we're being silly <laughs> i would make a motion to uh to approve the chair to sign um the third party um landfill inspection report and um, and get get copies back to DOT and to Jan Amin and copies with us and um, so that's it okay. for, the, for the transportation. Great. Uh, um, all those in favor? Dave Wolf from I. Carolyn Ness I. Trevor McDaniel I. Great. I'm sorry, I can't find it, and I know it's there. I just can't no, land on it. There, it's fine. I thought it was the signage, but I can't yeah, remember either. what item needed signage. <laughs> Whether it, it, it was which, it was on the which place. Yeah. I, yeah, that's what I thought too, but now I can't find it. Yep, and it can't go in. Let's um, face it, as reports go, that was a pretty good report. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Oh my God. Spending Kevin no money. Kevin and the guys do a great job there. They really do. Yes. Well, Thank you for the need to not spend that much money, right? right. Yes. <laughs> it was, oh my God, no money. I know great. that we're, um, yeah, okay, good. So that's good. Um, so the next item is uh, I had on here, I just had added proposed meeting with DOT. And, you know, I had this on the last meeting. I really want to get a meeting together with them. I, I can't remember who we spoke to that time, but we all went down and had a nice powwow. And I know we probably can't do that. We'd have to have a Zoom one. I did ask, so I At reached this, out because I wasn't sure you know, where to uh, go with this. And I yes. reached out to John. Uh, Thank you. Turk and yes. asked him to get me I have a contact what I would like from you guys is an identification of some of the things that we need to talk to them about because they're going to be less reticent if they if it's so, if it's nebulous they may not no, want no, to do uh, it we can zero it's it's um infrastructure I want to talk about so I know that we're um we're on the list to do more of those sidewalk returns that um that, that they did last year uh there's several more on uh, chief gave me a list of or sent an email out recently about a list of, so I wanna just talk about that, talk about the sidewalks on Sugarloaf Street. 
the old Sugarloaf Street and Park Street um, from DOT and when they can get infrastructure up. They wanted us to, to uh, lobby our state legislatures to do the bond bill, which I think it passed. Yeah, I think Carolyn's been, been doing uh, now that yeah, just, it uh, passed. Yeah, it so passed. I just want to, yeah, it, so it I just want to see where they're at. Well, it included infrastructure upgrade money. Yeah. So we could, so uh, this is really billed, Casey, as a follow up meeting um, mm -hmm. on our process to take over Sugarloaf Street. And that's and how then, I, yep. And, and clarify um, us using moving forward with streetscape and all that kind yes. of stuff. And then because so, so the having them own part of our common is making it really hard for us to get streetscape yeah. money. So and I know that we they were forward on it. They were open to helping us and working with us. We just need to get, you know, get back at the table again with them. The couple other things we had on there was the dry bridge, um, you know, just to keep that on their tickler to kind of get that back going again um, to talk about that. And the last item um, to talk a little, I would like to talk a little bit with them about their phase one is coming up from Waitley up five and 10 with new crosswalks, sidewalks, yeah. all that, just to talk about their plan for phase two with, um, with the possibility of treehouse coming in, the amount of traffic that's going to be there, uh, the development at Mill Village Road, you know, what's their schedule on that? Um, just to kind of just have a just a little powwow to see what what they're planning, you know, let them be, make them aware of how much traffic tree, uh, treehouse is going to bring into the town, and and what kind of thoughts they have about it. people walking. That was my dog. And that was out for that was that plan, but at least you know just to start on that stuff. But just and then maybe just to have a solid contact. So when we talk about this stuff, we can, you know, we don't have to bother you with a whole meeting. We can just have a meeting. So hold, hold your. My husband is. <laughs> she mutes her. She mutes. Uh, that's okay. We'll get you off or the meeting. You. My husband is trying to make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I muted her. <laughs> yeah, I just, are you she sense? could see it. You know what it's gonna, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, uh oh, mute. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. So, <laughs> uh, so that's. Neat? <laughs> I just really. Oh uh, no, that's to... later. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should know that, that David and I somehow. do share I, I, a. No, I don't penchant for bourbon on very occasion, <laughs> occasional. Uh, well, the only night. thing, You're I mean, hey, <laughs> develop a taste for bourbon, you know, yep. just a little bit. You'll be snowed in tomorrow. It's a good. I know, good right? Yep. Uh, I got to get a new one now because my number two drinks angel bourbon. So <laughs> I don't have oh. that at the bar. <laughs> you should discuss that with my husband. They're bourbon aficionados down there. <laughs> so, um, so, okay. So the meeting, uh, with DOT, if we can get that scheduled somehow in the future, because we're, you know, working with um, Berkshire Design uh, on the common, they were out there today surveying the common. So that's yep. really good. I uh, saw them out there with a the tripod. So if we can just kind of tie all that in, you know, what is, how do we slow down Park Street? Can we put some bumps in? Can we redirect Park Street to a 90 degree turn to the right? So people don't just, you know, zip through the center of town at, you know, 50 miles an hour. They well, see, there's, so right. there's, therein lies a couple of problems. You've exactly. got the dry bridge, you've got access, first of all, and yep. you've got trucks. There's ways Absolutely. to get around it. Yeah. But I've had this conversation with Kevin, actually yep. with Adam Sokolowski, because we went to a meeting about the site, the, what do you call those? The sidewalk returns mm -hmm. earlier this year. So I got some yeah. education there. Yeah. But really, it's making sure that we keep in mind that everybody has to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> this is why meetings at home can be challenging. Um, so that we, <laughs> he's he's Zoom bombing us. All right. Bye, Kurt. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So, it, you know, just make sure that we take into account some of the needs we might have, especially with Sugarloaf Street, because I know that Kevin is concerned that we yes. make sure that we don't take on problems that may have been there for 20 years, exactly. that we get some recognition that there needs to be a balance before, if we do take Sugarloaf Absolutely. Street, that there's a balance for Sugarloaf and Park Street so that we don't have to go back and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of to fix something that they know. chose yeah. to 
to wait to do, so yeah, to speak. Absolutely. No, that's no, we already told conversation. Them. Yeah, they the know that. I just don't know what that looks like. Kevin knows what that looks like. I don't really know. So I kind of want him involved in oh, that. He'll be there. Yeah, he was there last time. Casey, John was that's there. Why we supported, that's why it was in the bond bill. Money was in the bond bill to upgrade the infrastructure. That's what the initial meeting was for was for us to say yes we were interested in taking over sugarloaf street but we were not going to take it over without infrastructure um replacement and improvements yeah. and okay so the amount in the bond bill is supposed to cover that we lobbied for it and it passed and so we, what we are looking for is a timeline and mm -hmm. what and continued agreement that we are moving forward on this yeah and it, and if and can we in the meantime have a memorandum of understanding that we can adjust park to slow down traffic or yes. what what is acceptable what's not you know that kind of thing and in, so in you do want to get a memorandum of slowing down traffic on we park did Street. our part we did our part the traffic we got the money yeah. we got the money in the bond bill for it and we now want to move forward so yeah. i think it needs to be a little bit formal than just us saying, yeah, we're interested. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. We'll get you money. We'll support you. Yeah. whatever, you know? So one thing I would say now that I know a little bit more about, you know, how that, how that was framed. Um, I think it's a good idea. Once we get a flavor for where DOT is and mm -hmm. how supportive they will be, right. I think we need to invite the public into that conversation in a similar yes. manner as we need of to course. get them on board, you know, at least to a table about the tree boxes and the rain Absolutely. gardens, because yep. I, this, ha this would have a big effect on the businesses. And I, sure. there, I think we will get commentary. So That's it's fine. just like trying Absolutely. to coordinate things. Don't you dare. <laughs> no. Okay. Moving on. We do. We need to. Um, we'll get you done with this meeting so you'll be free. <laughs> he, see, he refuses <laughs> oh, oh, oh. to leave me alone. <laughs> it's Christmas. I know. Oh, oh. It's it's Rudolph. It's Rudolph. Dive bombing my Zoom. <laughs> so we um. So I think the only other thing we have is. But at mail. least we're all smiling. Oh, we have mail, and then uh, Carolyn wanted to talk a bit about um, COVID, I believe. Right. Okay. So Just mail. The mail we had was a um, a nice letter from um, to to us from the North Northfield Historical Commission recently voted unanimously to express our appreciation of Bud uh, David Bud Driver and thank him for his invaluable assistance over the years. Mr. Uh, Driver, a longtime member of the Deerfield Historical Commission and Deerfield's first cultural resources officer, has uh, generously shared with us his knowledge uh, of area history and archeology, span as well as of the Connecticut River. Most notably, he helped us develop and successfully execute an archeological accountability policy for our town. Since its approval in 2014, this policy has been an essential tool in our cultural preservation efforts, especially during the recent relicensing of the major utilities on the Connecticut River. On behalf of the North Beer, uh, Historical Commission, a huge thank you to David Bud Driver for his give uh, for giving uh, his time, knowledge, and hard work uh, to our success. Uh, sincerely, Barb uh, Lejac, uh, Chair of the Northfield Historical Commission. So that was really nice to get. Yeah. Um, and nice recognition. You, for, for uh, Casey, would you make sure Bud gets a copy of this letter? Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. thank you. Um, so that this, was Yes, very nice. Very nice. He does a lot of work. I'd really like to sit with him and learn a bit more about all of that that he's been working on. Um, we have uh, temporary operations uh, during COVID-19 for the building department. Um, so, so what you've received is you've received the operational, the staggered operation of staff yep. in the offices. You'll see this was something that Dick and Bob and I discussed. Great. And they they just memorialized it so you know yeah but we're cool. trying to limit exposure um amongst staff and particularly yeah. that office is fairly close um mm -hmm. as in terms of a setup um right. and then there's also an the email from me that outlines what the staff in the select board office will be working because we're going to do a rotating schedule as well yep um okay. and so you know jennifer's going to be in the morning 
in in the morning. Pat's going to be in the in in the afternoon. I'll be in whenever, basically whenever I need to be. I mean, I had a problem yeah. with Kelleher. I had to go in a little bit early. Yeah. Um, okay. But we'll have we'll make adjustments so that we limit that to some extent. And right. we have deployed remote accessibility for um, Pat, Jennifer, myself, Subaru lot, um, Bob Walden. He has a computer. We do have some remote connectivity that we that Dick has, but Dick tends to be a little bit more in and out, so he can read his email. Um, yeah. He's a little more comfortable doing it that way. That's Hopefully, fine. he doesn't get mad at me for saying that. Um, we've also deployed remote um, accessibility equipment to the finance department, the assessors department, the. I'm waiting on a couple of things for other departments. Um, and basically it's become paramount now that there's an uptick in COVID that mm -hmm. we distance ourselves as much as possible, but still be able to get the work done, yeah. you know? And to some extent, that means some of us have to take paperwork home, whereas others may have a lot more of that on their computer. So, yeah. you know, we're creating, sending out laptops with people and setting up the VPNs with Northeast IT, which is our IT uh, vendor will help and it's it's funny i had the laptops ready and then we ended up having a, an issue in the office and deployed them made sure i had them to deploy them so that yep. everybody can do their vpn setup with northeast it tomorrow okay good i mean well we have to i mean the, there's a light at the end of the tunnel with vaccines and karen will yes. get into this but but really um and it's not a train coming at us <laughs> but right now it kind of feels like that with with the upticks the, the cases that we're getting are just numerous and numerous and I can't thank Carolyn and, and Lisa um, and Elisa White, our town nurse, and Meg. Everybody that's been working on, on the contact tracing have been working literally all night long, 24-7, um, um, trying to get our handle on hands around this. And again, I'll let her yeah. talk further on this, but I just, just to say thank you for uh, watching out for the staff, keeping people safe, but keeping the town running and, and services out to people so that in several months from now, we'll, we'll be in a much better place and still being able to move forward. So Carolyn, yeah. you want to lay in on? Uh, Go on, Carolyn. <laughs> uh, where have you been? <laughs> the last uh, just a couple yeah. last couple weeks. <laughs> Um, just a couple selectman updates. Um, apparently in the budget, um, we do have technical assistance money for the FERCOG to do our needs assessment for, um, yes. for the seniors. So this is really good news. So we can move ahead. Unfortunately, um, I did meet with the art, you know, was in the meeting today with the architect, potential mm -hmm. architect, and that went really well. It was really encouraging and I feel comfortable with that architect. But um, I missed the three o'clock meeting because I had other phone calls I had to make. So um, I don't know what happened with the building assessment. It was a good meeting, Carolyn. It, oh, it, okay. Just to update you. Yes, each could you update building. us on that? Yes. Yeah, they updated each building and kind of went over a small summary of what they found and what we should do. And uh, so that, that was a good meeting. And then they will plan a, a Saturday kind of get together as well. So the public can join in and, um, and, and update everybody. Um, is and get that, feedback. Is so, that, so you'll have another chance to listen to that. Is that report, um, Casey, do we, have, do we have a final of that report or no? Yes, they're all online. Okay, perfect. All right. Yep. I just wanted to make sure people had access to that. Yep, but anyway, we are moving forward. Um, and I, I felt really comfortable today. Lily Dwight is chair of that committee. We are looking for more volunteers of anyone that is interested. Okay. Um, yes. and moving along to COVID, which has, as Trevor mentioned, has been taking, taking over our lives. But um, it is, it's very distressing, or it has been very distressing to see the number of people that um, are confirmed COVID. And, and also I get the contact list. So um, while we've been very, very lucky, a lot of our contacts have not gotten sick. Um, the potential for being sick is, is really scary. So, you know, the numbers and the reach. I, I feel again that um, our schools for the most part have been very um, escaped, but it doesn't matter because we're remote right now anyway um, until after the holidays. But um, the group that seems to be the biggest group is the 60s and 70 year olds. And 
Mm -hmm. I just cannot emphasize enough. I know it's really hard and it's very isolating, but people need to pay attention and make sure that they're not um, getting outside their household group, especially for the holidays. I know it's very hard making those changes and in my own family is very difficult, but we have really, really have to do that because otherwise we're just not gonna get our numbers down. I, I feel like the last day or two, we are seeing a decrease. And we're not, you know, when I turn my computer off at night and I turn it on in the morning early, you know, I don't have like three or four or five coming, popping up. Um, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that we are over the Thanksgiving bump. Yeah, that was huge. Please, please pay attention, uh, wear your mask, try to social distance and keep within our household pods um, through the holidays uh, so we don't have a holiday bump. That's all I can say. Um, I did want to say uh, just a little bit of update on the what's happening with the vaccine vaccines. Um, Pfizer is out there; um, is is being distributed. There are some healthcare workers in our community that are getting it, um, uh, but it's mostly through the hospitals that have the, you know, the deep freeze comp uh, capability. The general public or the average person is probably not going to get the Pfizer vaccine. Um, I think I have more hope for the Moderna, uh, which will be approved, I'm sure, pretty soon and, and will be out there. As far as I know, we're still phase three and four, which means we'll probably be getting it sometime in the spring. Um, we may see it earlier, or we the Pfizer one, maybe there'll be other um, kind of arrangements made for the cold chain management um, so that even we as the local boards of health can have it. But we are ready uh, to do it um, through our highway garage. We've been successful. So, um, and the paperwork is going in saying that we're ready. Um, we're just trying to get as much information as possible. Um, there just is not clear, you know, what we're gonna have and when. Um, and the next group is the first responders and it's not clear, just like the testing, the state is gonna set that up or we're gonna be responsible. Uh, so who knows, but again, we're ready. If it's us, we can do it. We know we can do it through the highway garage and that's what we're gonna do, whether, no matter what the weather is. But not all the protocols, you know, the protocols haven't been worked out. And when I talk about protocols, I mean like screening, um, you know, the questions you ask, um, you know, there's certainly, if you have allergies, you should not be taking the Pfizer um, vaccine. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about allergies, if you carry an EpiPen or have any kind of um, that level of allergies, this appears not to be your vaccine. Um, we have a lot of questions. It will certainly prevent you from getting severely ill, mm -hmm. like being hospitalized ill. But just like the flu shot, you will not not necessarily not get sick. It's just your degree of sickness will be much, much reduced. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, it's very good. It will keep you out of the hospital. Um, but we're not really sure how long the protection is. We'll get more information as time goes on. Um, how long the, this protection, you know, is it a year or so mm -hmm. it has to be an annual shot or is it longer? We don't know. And it is also not clear um, whether you can still transmit uh, the infection. So you still want to, uh, you still wear a right. mask if you get this. If you think that we're going to get rid of the mask anytime soon, forget it. Nope. We're, we're, we're perfect. You know, this Zoom, Zoom's life and masks and is not going it's away good. very fast. Yeah. But there is hope and, and, and the, the degree of illness, the impact of illness is going to be much reduced. So mm -hmm. it's good news. Um, and as soon as we have more information, uh, you know, I go to all these calls, I go to these Zoom meetings. So as soon as we have any more information, I will certainly pass it on to everybody. Um, I just want to say again, um, the RNA platform for the Pfizer, um, you know, these vaccines has been worked on since the 90s. I know there's concern about the safety of these vaccines, but it's not like they just got generated in nine months. Yes, 
against the COVID, yes, but the platform itself has been um, worked on since the 90s. And I think that's very important and should give some reassurance to people that this is not like, you know, craziness or, you know, whatever. Anyway, all those rumors out there, there, there is solid scientific evidence that these vaccines are safe. So for the most part, however, again, they have not been tested out all that much on children. And so anyone under 18, I would say, uh, I know they say 17, but, you know, young kids, their immune systems are much uh, better and stronger than older people. And the, it's not clear in the reactions. So again, no kids and somebody with allergies, you're going to have to wait. Um, so thank you. That's all I had to say. Great. Thank you. Well, thanks for, again, thanks for all you're doing and thanks for everything that um, all the public health people across the county are doing. Um, you know, I'll just address a little bit the uh, school closure. I know that's heartbreaking for a lot of kids and parents. Um, it's very difficult to, you know, we, we had voted the last week that we we're all ready to go back. And then, you know, we, we just didn't, you know, we hoped that we weren't going to have such a huge bump from, um, from Thanksgiving, but, you know, it's, if, and all I can stress is you need to wear your mask and do the social distancing stuff that we've been talking about forever. If you want your kids back in school, that's the only thing that can help. We're going to relook at the math tricks again but what we had to do was uh, do what we said we were going to do and be honest and trust trusting to our community when we set um, a memorandum of uh, understanding with the teachers uh, that they were going to be in the school and safe we we set out parameters and you know once that once that bump hit so large and so fast um, it, it just went above all the metrics that we said that you know we would take a pause at if they went over that so we had to take a pause we're going to evaluate that. Um, we deal. We do still feel like schools are safer than than many places, but with so much community spread going on, we're very concerned with that. So I think um, our our goal is to get the kids back after the fourth, and um, you know after New Year's to be back on the fourth of January. We're, we have a meeting on the 29th to look at that again. Um, we'll be looking at the uh, the metrics to see um, now that we've lived with this for so many months. Can we? You know, we set the metrics back in the spring, you know, when we had to open. And now that we've lived with this, we can zero in a little bit more and look at these metrics a little bit better to see if we can um, adjust those to make sure that we could stay in a little longer or um, handle a little bit, you know, different different setup or different exposures. So I think um, that that's tricky work and it's gonna take some time, but um, we'll work on that over the next week or so and then get back on what, the campus. Does that make sense? What Trevor's Carolyn? talking about is, is, you know, when we were talking about higher numbers in our community, there wasn't any exposure, as far as we could tell, to the school. No transmission in the schools was right. happening. But what happened is that we could not be on top of the cases as fast, um, even though we immediately go start tracing. It just takes, there were so many and there were so many contacts that you can't guarantee that there wasn't going to be a school ex exposure. So that's why we had to do this and um, you know close down the school because there was just so many, the numbers were fierce. So what we have to do is everyone needs to pay attention. Everyone needs to wear a mask. We got to get our numbers down again so the kids can go back to school and they can play sports. This is really critical for us as a community. We're all in this together and we got to get our numbers down again. Yep, that's exactly right. So um, so that, that's kind of where we're at. So um, I, I just, um, we won't have a meeting before the holidays. So I wish you all a very um, happy holidays with your family, stay safe together. Oh, Casey, go ahead. Can I have two, can I just let of people course, know two things? As much, as much as you want, yeah. Um, okay. So as you, well, you didn't, I don't think I forwarded all the budget sheets for you, to you, but Brenda worked on the budget. She pushed the FY 2022 budget sheets out on Friday oh, great. Um, with the memo. And basically in the memo, we asked everyone to submit their salaries based on the current compensation plan, which leads me into my next note. Um, we've received, we've, I've been, 
can, I've been working with Mary Cardi at the Collins Center, and we had a meeting earlier this week. Um, we went over some of the draft evaluation of points and stuff that we received for uh, several of the jobs. So we're continuing to work on that. Um, but we're at a point where I, Mary would like to do an introduction to the personnel board about really what a classification means, like what a class comp study means. So she sent me some information uh, that I forwarded out to the personnel board. And it's basically an outline of what the criteria are in a budget, in a job description that give you a certain point spread and what they can expect to see in a classification compensation plan. So I just wanted to alert you that we're going to give the documents to the personnel board and Mary's going to talk to them briefly on Monday at six at their meeting. Um, because we're hoping, and this was Brenda and Mary, not necessarily together. And my conversation was, we're hoping that we will be able to push out the study within the budget process so that we can attempt to, to plan for those possible changes. Okay. Um, the other thing was that we do have our capital, we have capital submissions. We're putting them together. It's taken a little bit longer, um, just through the mechanics of remote work. Uh, but I'm still working on that. And Jennifer has been helping me with that. So we're trying to do this together, but really the biggest challenge we're facing right now is the uptick in COVID-19 and response in, you know, for pur purposes of services has really become a challenge because it's impacting our ability to do some of our large projects like handling the CARES Act, handling FEMA, um, handling these the infrastructure projects. So I just want to warn everybody that if you don't hear from us right away, it's not that we're ignoring you, it's that we may have something very large looming on that radar screen. But we're trying to communicate as best we can. And you know, Kelleher Drive is, is one of those situations. So that culvert, we pushed out a notice to the residents, basically telling them, you know, what we had talked about earlier with Chris Curtis and identifying the fact that we do have some, some time of some kind of a time frame, and that we're aware that they're worried. And so we're, we're trying to keep them informed of our, our understanding that we, that would there, they may feel uncomfortable. So we're doing our best to keep that information flowing. I just got an email from um, somebody that was helping us get that information out. Um, K Casey, how are we doing on the CARES Act? Are we gonna make it to the end of the month? Well, I think so. We, there's some things that we're, that we're making adjustments on. Remote connectivity, um, air purifiers, those sorts of things. I mean, we're finishing getting some of that stuff in. There were a couple questions that we had. We're waiting for bills from DES and FRS. And we've gotten about $42,000 worth of bills from them. We're waiting for the bulk of their submissions. So um, that's something that, I've, that Brenda and I have been working with Shelly on. So it's, it's really the hardest part of that, Carolyn, is knowing that things are in flux with FEMA. FEMA has not, we still have, we have two projects in front of them and we've started the third. So we're doing our best to plan for the worst and hope for the best, but it, it's kind of a, a daily review. We did, John and Brenda and I had a meeting yesterday to evaluate where we were, what we might need to address. And so now that we're reaching out to the schools and reevaluating what we need for supplies and equipment, I think we're in decent shape. It's just the next several weeks is, is it's gonna play out however it plays out. My concern is that, um, you know, Dick is spending out an awful lot of hours on COVID. I know. And, um, Any know. of his hours over 19 hours, I mean, that's really COVID. And he's spending, he's responding. This is what I mean about the uptick. It really takes him off task for other things, but it also impacts us as we're making decisions. Us as a group, I mean, department heads as we're groups. Um, and so making sure that he has the resources he needs is, is key. But with the end of the, the year coming and that cutoff for CARES Act and FEMA, that's, um, I wanted you to, that's a challenge. I wanted you to um, project what we need for January and February, okay? All right. Based on, you know, say December's expenses or something like that. Because I, I, I feel like we're going to 
be just as bad um, January and February as we are, you know, this, this month. Okay. Let me write myself a note. I mean, it's, you know, it's businesses and, you know, it's the constant, constant stuff. And so the other thing you have to understand is everything has to be built out June by December 30th. So anything that goes beyond that, and this is why I keep warning people, not necessarily all of you in the same meeting, but warning people about transfers. Because if we have to pick up a tab, then because we still have to do the enforcement, it really will impact particularly his time. Well, I think some of the enforcement we're switching over to the state. Um, you know, so that that's good uh, in a couple places. So that's going to reduce some of his time. Okay. D DLS has already, um, you know, agreed to do it. They're going to do inspections and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> They're going to do enforcement on on a couple cases that we're working on. Okay. And so that all right. So I'll see if I can project something into January and February, but. Honestly, we might be at that point where we have to consider making transfers in our own accounts, especially if the feds don't come down with any assistance for the towns and cities. I know. Casey, I know. I'm just asking you to do an estimate, you know, rough yeah. estimate, not even something, you know, that, but I just want some ballpark figures out there. Mm -hmm. Just like I did for the, you know, tracing, you know, obviously we don't know what the costs are, but, you know, it's three to four thousand dollars a month. So let's make sure that we have three or four thousand dollars a month for at least January and February. Well, just, we can't take it out of cares. We just no, have to no, no, no. just we just have to know. Yes, projected. I just want us to be, you know, have these in the back of our mind. That's all. OK. I mean, who knows? We, we people might be might be very um, conscientious, and we might not have very many cases. It might go back to summer levels. Summer levels were were within our own, you know, regular budgeted. Right. So, it just depends. Yeah. Okay. So again, um, anything if, else? If kids in school. Kids in school kids playing sports and not spending your tax dollars on COVID, please wear your mask. <laughs> that's a, that's totally a good it. plug. That's a good reminder, Carolyn. Completely, completely a fiscal issue for sure. Oh yeah. Um, so we do, you know, I know on, on our agenda, it says we have a meeting on the 30th, uh, but we also, we do have. Oh, I didn't finish out the a, January um, stuff. On the Sorry. 29th for, that's, no, it's okay. Yes, so the four, four, four town meeting. Four, four. Yeah, for, 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 for the health, health. meeting yep, yeah. with the schools um so and the school committee uh is the well. 29th yes is that five o'clock or six o'clock i have heard is now five let me is that, that correct I, think I have it oh i don't even have it in my calendar so <laughs> you tell me no i think it's five but i could i don't know yet I think is it four it town board of health yes yes four okay towns. i want to write that down yeah. And I think the reason why we scheduled at five is because um, I was worried we didn't have time to confer with Dave what his schedule was. Yeah. So we were hoping, Dave, that you could be able to make it um, if we had it earlier. I could do the 29th. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Good. Then I, I did think we sent it at five, though. So. Um, and I think there was the reason was Darius had other meetings that night too. Maybe yeah, I don't that know. could be that could be for sure. Yeah. Um, actually, actually, I was mainly concerned time. about Dave at first. I have to go back. I can switch my hours for the 29th. You have what? I can switch my hours for the 29th. Oh, okay. Well, I think we set it at five o'clock. <laughs> I wrote it down at five o'clock. Right. So okay. hopefully, we'll I will tell you in a minute. Okay. All right, so um, so we have yeah, and then our regular meeting will be on the thirtieth, and I think that's all. I just wish every, you know we'll be here before the year end to wish everybody a happy new year. But um, I hope you all enjoy your families um, for the holidays. Happy I know holidays. it's Hanukkah, Hanukkah now, and people are going to enjoy Christmas uh, next week. So it's perfectly okay. legitimate to say happy holidays. There are twenty nine holidays. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, because I can't list twenty nine of them, but. 
I do um, know Hanukkah and Christmas. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody. Yep. Yes. All right. Happy Festivus. Where, I'll be annoying. Festivus. Where's the Festivus poll? Yeah. We're gonna air <laughs> our we got plenty of grievances to air this year. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please, everyone, well, be safe, safe in the snowstorm. Right. Oh, well, thank you all for coming. And we tonight. will be remote for that snowstorm, just so you know. I'm calling it a remote snow day. Yes, I think everybody is. Yep. So, um, okay. So, uh, motion to adjourn. I shall move. And I second that. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, all those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Thank you all.